Life behind the walls of places dedicated to defending the free lands of the United States of America isn't easy. And just like always, we delve behind those walls today to see the daily life of personnel in Zanesis USAR. Joining us today is the Commanding General of the Army Special Operations Command, Real Tamer, whose microphone may not be the best today. Greetings, my name is General Real Tamer, and I'm the Commanding General of the Army Special Operations Command. I've been in Zan's USCR for about two to three years. Two to three years ago, I got bored and decided to go through games on the Roblox page and stumbled across Fort Martin. I found this kind of military genre new because it differentiates itself from other military based games. It doesn't focus on the border games, it focuses on making a genuine United States Army experience. I used to be in USR before, but it was only for a short period of time and I forgot most bits about what happened. Although I do remember me being in Tradoc and that's about it. So, it's quite a long story, but I'll try to summarize it the best I can. Before ASOC, I was in many positions back when Spacecom existed. Although, Army staff decided to shut down Spacecom because it no longer served proper function. Which left me in having no choice but to join another command. When Shogun was CSA, he opened up CTRG and I was introduced as senior personnel. Unfortunately, that was also shut down, so my next step was ASOC. I'd say it's a matter of coincidence. There are... It's a long story. So... My experience for USCR was pretty wild. I was actually in USCR for a short while back in 2019 when I was in Tradoc, though I did fail the Drill Sergeant Academy and that led me to leaving USCR because I just couldn't be of it anymore. Well, I did rediscover USCR on the 15th of July, 2020, yeah, and I just took a walk around Fort Martin, then I saw Spacecom having a tryout there, at the paths, and decided, you know, why not join it, because if I was going to fail, at least I would have experience from it. I did my laps, rock climbing, infantry training, and more. The tryout map was on Orbital Station 1, which is actually what MIC or CID uses now for their tryouts. UNCR was very fun, and I managed to get in quite a few positions. I started off in the Level Space Infantry and applied for an instructor position. At the time, Spacecom did fascinate me, as it was super unique and amazing at the time. Like, it really does differentiate itself from other units in Forcecom, Tradoc, ASOC, anything else. It's high level technology just fucking blew my mind. Some time later, I joined Section 3 as a Sergeant Major for a person named Zen Saizo, which was a Muslim section. I got shot down because Zen decided to cheat in a 1v1 against shotgun. Though, I was over two positions, company staff or level frequent squad. Now, I did want to be a part of the Orbital Shop Shock Shoopers, but I knew that was out of my league, so my best option would be 11th Frequon Squad. And at the time, 11th Frequon Squad was still very unique, so I decided to take 11th Frequon. Wasn't anything too crazy though, in a nutshell, I led a unit that had a few of the most elite uh, personnel in Spacecom, disregarding ODSC and Noble. Shotgun, who was a CG at the time, moved me and my units into what Spacecom had, they were an official unit, CTRG. 
That happened because Shogun wanted CGRG to become more official. Over the long months in Spacecom, I was in multiple raids and learned from Highcom, especially Shogun, and everyone else's leadership skills. Him and his team led Spacecom very well, and I'm thankful to have a great team that led me and many others, because without them, I doubt I would have the knowledge and skills I would have today. Sometime later around October 2021, I was lined up for my battalion Highcom to be the next CSM of Spacecom. Keep in mind, CHRG CO had only the rank of E8, so I was pretty much a low rank. The reason being is that CHRG was still a group and not a company, or anything big. However, Command Highcom chose me to be the CSM of Spacecom. A few days later, Command Highcom position got changed and I was lined up for Chief of Staff. Keep in mind during Spacecom, COS was higher than CSM. Well, I did fail OCS three times, got humiliated in the OCS chat. And then, a few days afterwards, I was allowed to send a shutdown Spacecom. From there on, I joined Soul and became the BSM of Eagle. All these new things that were totally different from Spacecom just hit me in the face. I served like two weeks as BSM of Eagle, then I left because I was invited as a senior personnel in CHRG. Before anything else could even be made official, Zan decided to shut down CHRG as well. It was a huge letdown for me because I did put a lot of effort with CTRG and Spacecom, but you know, I had to cope with it. I decided to remain in USCR and try to rebuild my career. ASOC still had open arms, so I did decide to join SF instead. Reason being, SF and not 75th was because of friends named Taken OL or Taken SB. We did meet back in Spacecom and made a GC with a few other ex Spacecom personnel. Army stuff, if you're seeing this, we had nothing US related, don't worry. I believe in SF I joined as a group commanding officer, but I'm not sure because it's been quite a while. I joined Bravo Company as a platoon leader, and I was actually meant to stay there temporarily because Taken wanted me to join like SF. But I ended up having a wide opportunity in 75th, and was very welcome to it. In a matter of two weeks, I jumped from platoon leader to battalion commanding officer of 1RB, which is the main fighting battalion. I do recall the majority of 75th being on good terms with me, which helped me gain a good reputation. From there on, I jumped the ranks from EXO to CO, COS to DCG, and finally CG. I've pretty much been in almost every single staff position for the past two to three years, and they've been an amazing journey for me. Like, I've met new people. I attended thousands of CTs, constantly wanting to improve my FAR skills. I learned how to manage and create documents, all that, activity, in a unit, the trellos, so many things. For me, leading ASOC isn't a big deal. Well, it's probably because I got used to my position and the things I involve myself into, many people cannot do. One of the issues in USCR is that personnel will make new friends and because of their emotions, which we can't really help, they will try to defend them from like CIA reports or any sort of trouble. I have to be strict because it's a part of what comes with being a CG. Well, when I'm not busy, I'm spending my time in USCR. I deal with reports from CID, from Battalion Regimental Highcom, check up on both SOAR and 75th, innovate new ideas, schedule ASIC wide events, essentially the nerdy stuff. And I do all of this with my transit team, with my DCG, Chief of Staff, CSM, to help me out with all of this. To be honest, ASOC doesn't skirmish against other military groups as often, and it's because of the war. Obviously the war never happens, and so the hype of war games is over. And I believe that's what caused the atmosphere of like the war experience to just completely plummet. Although I do have plans to go against another group soon, which is Cavs USCR. Before I do that though, I need to focus on some it's okay true stuff that I can't listen to this video for confidential reasons. War games really put an atmosphere and it teaches other personnel on the true warfare experience and helps teach staff how to lead personnel into combat.
due to the tech we have in USCR, I would say our pilots are the best of the best. Other military groups will have other systems such as a buzzer system or typical WASD, QE, you know, basic roadblock system. However, the pilots we have in USCR are open to organized and high quality technology, which allows the pilots to build their aviation skills the best out of any other military group I've been in. <laughs> Alright, well, I don't have many like embarrassing moments for me in Zen and USCR. However, the most embarrassing would probably be the time where I did fail OCS three times and got f***ing roasted in the OCS chat. So that happened. With it was an embarrassing experience, it gave me a reality check and it built me as a character. I took it as more of a learning experience and moved on. That is one of the reasons why I am today's ASOC CG. Honestly, I don't have a main reason to stay motivated, nor do I even need one. I believe my discipline is what keeps me going on. I think that the discipline came from Spacecom, as it had high expectations for its personnel. However, I am mainly a very honest and disciplined person, despite it sounding hypocritical and douchey to say. One aspect that I think Zan GS I can improve on is probably the Mac on Fort Martin. Like, I've seen civilians bypass the parachuting system so that they can, you know, get free skydiving and shit. So it's easy for them to raid. I believe that's one of the issues that Zan GSR or or what many developers can work on. Essentially it's just the bugs and glitches that are on the map right now. Um, on a scale of 1 to 10, I would rate Zan's USCR as a solid 8 out of 10. For some people, USCR is a simply, you know, some like an army group, you know, some like cringe military experience. But for others, people have actually changed because of their experience in USCR. You know, people have learned new things, make new friends, overall have a, a good grip on their military experience. I'm thankful to have met all the people I've encountered, whether they're one of the few that hate me, member of self that I've encountered with, or just a friend. We hope you enjoyed listening to General Real Tamer on Xanasis USAR. Make sure to check it out for yourself. And scene. <laughs> Greetings, my name is General Real Tamer. Someone... No, let's restart. <laughs> <laughs> well, ah, shit. because it differentiates ourselves. Oh, oh, I can't, I can't even say differentiate. Oh wait, wait, I don't have an answer to say. <laughs>